actually, I was recently at a holiday park and um, during the bingo, obviously, if it got a bit too rowdy, um, the person on the mic would go, shh, 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 and then everybody would go, shh, shh. So, well, should we try it? Ready? Shh, 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 shh. That's it, there we go. Every now we can resume playing bingo because it's a very serious game, as you can imagine, at a holiday park when you're paying for like up to like 20 quid and some crisps. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, we're getting into our future of Magento panel next, and I'm surrounded by some very clever people, which I will introduce to you. So, having worked with Magento since 2011, he's the founder of Hoover Themes, the fastest Magento front end currently on the market, which he accidentally built out of frustration <laughs> um, with the Luma theme, funnily enough, <clears throat> and the PWA solutions available. Welcome, Willem Wigman. I also have the founder and managing director of Space48, one of the UK's leading e-commerce agencies and also the founders of this event. So big, big shout out to Space and John Woodall. <laughs> I'm loving this, this applause that we've got going, it's great. Um, and this lovely lady with me here, um, she's a business and marketing professional with over 20 years of retail and e-commerce experience. She's the strategy and marketing VP at Hoover, as well as being the vice president of Major OS. I'm sure you all know her, Tin Lam. Weber, sorry. Tin Weber, sorry. I, uh, I didn't write her surname on my notes, unfortunately. Sorry, apologies for that. Um, but I'm sure you all know her. Um, and after a long background in advertising in the music industry and spending 20 years building an open source business, he's now transitioned into the role of ex executive direc director for the Magento Association, Matthias Schrieber. <laughs> So as you know, we've been um, we've had a panel up, um, we've had a, a panel up, a slido up, collecting questions from you. Um, but just to break the ice, we've got a bit of an opening question to ask all of the panel. Um, so take it in turns, please, guys. So I would like you to tell me, in a quick fire answer, what Magento means to you. Um, are we? Yeah. Okay. Works. Um, Magento for me has became much more than just a piece of technology I work with. Um, it's very much about what happens in this room, what I've seen and felt throughout the whole day, all of the faces and all of the, the energy that everyone brings into building this platform and ecosystem together. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer that as a community, we're able to carry this platform and, and keep this going for, for a very long time. Yeah, um, so Magento to me personally uh, is something really special and I think what I'd, what I'd say about it is it is the community, it's the group of people that I've been fortunate enough to, to work with, build a business with, create this event with over the past how many years it's been now. So uh, I've made some great friends from doing it, I've had some great experiences, um, I feel really lucky to have, you know, sort of... Uh, been living through these past X many years. Now, I don't tend to go into numbers because it makes me sound older and I don't like that. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's just a really special thing and I've met loads of great smart people. So uh, something that, I, people that I hope that I stay connected with for a long time. Thank you. So for me, <clears throat> uh, Magento is the beginning of a second life I had. So my first life, um, I was programmed to work in big organizations who are listed on the stake exchange, so we had to push through results every quarter, and yeah. just like what you said earlier, it was all about the paycheck, the prestige, and then um, stuff happened in life with your family, your husband, your kids, and then I found myself in Norway, in the middle of nowhere, and I was like, oh, what do I do with my life? And I chose a company down the road, which was called, uh, which is called One Step Checkout. And it was a tiny team with a huge uh, presence on Magento. So I thought, okay, let's go. And I discovered Magento. So I went to events, and as you said, community, friends, and so on. But at the same time, it was quite relaxed. We had no targets, no deadlines. And so I took that time to spend uh, energy and and, and time with my family, um, doing other th things like sports, 
music. And, uh, and then I had time to get involved in the community. And uh, so when Vinay approached me uh, last year and said, oh, there's that major West thing we want to uh, build because we feel that the fire within Magento is dying down. Do you want to help? And I said, yes. So yeah, for me, Magento is not just a job, but like a lifestyle and lots of things I can do with my life um, rather than just working. Well, for me, well, let me start first off. This is purely by accident that <laughs> this group, and this group is just my, my left ear is shot from too else. loud DJing in the 90s. So, um, so for me, Magento is like like um, moving into a new neighborhood. You know, you, I, I knew about what Magento was like from the outside, um, but I'm moving in into this new neighborhood, which I see is full of passionate people. Um, it's like the the weird neighbors that do the parties and the barbecues stuff close by, and uh, that kind of fits my bill as well. So that, that's how I consider a community to work. Um, and from my little experience as I'm diving deeper into it, I think we have like every personality defect in the book, which is like amazing. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and uh, yeah, I see a lot of passionate people and being passionate myself uh, about open source in general. Um, I hope this was the right decision to move into this neighborhood. Until now, I like it. <laughs> oh, it definitely was. Um, I'll answer this question as well, although um, not officially part of the panel as the host. But for me, I think the, just echoing what everyone said about the community, obviously, I've been a part of, of this for the last 10 years. I started as a developer, moved into project management. But what the one thing that's really stood out for me within the Magento community is just how welcoming everyone is and how open everyone is, especially talking about subjects that are not necessarily easy to talk about. So like obviously with my talk earlier on mental health, that's always been very welcomed. It's always had a presence at all the events that I've been to. Um, and I think that's so important. Um, and yeah, that's that's what Magento means to me. It's, it's that, that, that vibe and just being comfortable in a safe space as well. So. To kick off with the questions and looking through what we've got, we've had quite a lot of new entries. <clears throat> um, but I want to start with Chen Lan. And as it was the top question for a while, but it's actually just been taken over by another one as the votes are coming in. <laughs> but the top question for, for a while was, what is Mage OS's plan? So I'd love to get into that with you. Um, so I'm lucky Vinay had a presentation on Mage OS <laughs> before. Uh, but uh, because it's lunch, I want everyone to, uh, it's after lunch, I want everyone to uh, stand up. And uh, I want the people who don't know about uh, Major West to sit down. Oh, poor Sam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, wa I want the people who signed the um, Magento Open Source Community Alliance letter to stay. Uh, up, and the others to sit down. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. And now I want the people who are involved in Discord or any major OS type of uh, activities to stay up or stand up if they didn't sign the letter. <laughs> oh, nice, cool, thanks. All right, so, uh, so okay, I'll give a bit of background on uh, majors. You can sit down. You can sit down. <laughs> 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 just stay talking, stay standing for yeah, the rest of the panel. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess for major OS, so there are three key pillars. One is product, and then I talked about it. And I guess where we're at now is that we, um, we are well prepared to build a very uh, compelling platform that can do a lot of things thanks to everyone's uh, bright mind, experience with e-commerce, experience with what merchants want. So the whole objective here is to have a platform that meets merchants' needs. And we are, we are well set up to do that. The second pillar is um, what we call content. So we just launched a website that um, covers a lot of what uh, Magento features uh, and documentation um, has because the magento.com uh, website disappeared. 
So we worked quite hard with a lot of people, and I want to uh, congratulate John Yu, where are you? Okay, and, and all thanks. the content committee, so a lot of you are here. Um, that pushed through that website, which looks amazing, but still it's an MVP. And our motto is we'd rather have something half-baked live rather than nothing at all. So help us continue cooking uh, that website so it's enriched and, um, and helps uh, agencies and merchants continue and understand the value of Magento. And the third pillar is um, the association. So to drive all that, we need to get organized. So we formed an uh, official association, international association. And it's a lot of paperwork, but very soon we'll have a bank account and we'll be able to open up memberships so that we can get uh, sponsorships from companies and also from everyone in the community um, so we can um, have resource to um, progress even quicker. Well, thank you. That was a really coverall answer, so I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to pick up on is obviously you did mention agencies next, just, um, and John being our, our agency specialist here, um, and something that I'm really interested in as well, I've just moved back agency side myself. Um, what do agencies need from Adobe and the community? It's a think? good question. Um, I was expecting a couple of boos first, actually, because I was mm -hmm. thinking to myself, well, yes, Space 48 came from the Magento world, but as everyone knows, we've you know we've moved off and we've done a lot with big commerce and Shopify and Shopware as well. We've done a couple of a couple with, so that um, that sort of route of exploration has, has actually I believe made us better as an agency because it has allowed us to better understand you know technology that's out there and what it can be used for. Um, so I think having not just that experience of technology but also understanding what the customer wants, the merchant wants, but also what. Um, what good looks like in terms of a partner relationship with a technology company. Yeah. I think we're actually really well placed to be able to talk about that. So um, I think what do we, so to come back to the question, what, what do we need from Adobe specific, who do, what do we want from Adobe specifically? I think it starts with the, the people relationship. I think there needs to be an understanding there that for the right opportunity, if it's right for the customer, if it's the right technology fit, then we would absolutely be supporting putting Adobe forward. Okay. But that's not always going to be the right choice. So I think yeah. there has to be a level of understanding there. But there's going to always going to be a little bit of conflict, and I understand that, because from their perspective, their agenda is going to be sell the software. To right? anyone. Yeah. So that's fine. I kind of get it. But um, I, think, I think they need to be open-minded that they're not always going to win. But where they are going to win, then obviously go, go after it and make sure that the agencies are, are going to support um, on those occasions. So I think what I'm asking for is for them to be open-minded that not every opportunity is going to be right, however realistic or unrealistic that might be because they're there to make money at the end of the day. Well, yeah, it's like if you're trying to put a shoe on that doesn't fit, it's not going to work for either party. So <clears throat> like you say, it just, it just need that, that focus down. Um, keeping it along the same lines of that kind of what do we need from Adobe in the community, um, as someone, obviously myself, I've been working a lot with Adobe Commerce on the merchant side and I've kind of fallen out a little bit of the community. Um, so I'm just kind of coming back in now, like I've started getting, opened up my Twitter account again and things like that. Um, so <clears throat> this next one's for, for Willem. So what do you think in terms of what do we need from Adobe and what can the community do? Yeah, it's an interesting question because uh, I came up with it myself because <laughs> it was one of the things that I would like to see explored or answered in this panel. So I didn't, didn't necessarily have the answer in mind myself, but it's something that um, I keep playing around with in my head uh, while I have discussions on the Magenta Association Board um, where we, we work with Adobe to and force the community or help them out with open source to, to progress there in, in small children's steps, um, unfortunately. But they are, they are giving us a hand and reaching out to help us um, move the platform forward. Um, what, yeah, what do we need from them indeed? Um, I think as a community, we're setting up uh, some quite good alternatives to carry 
the, the platform forward as a community with MageOS, which I consider a, a backup plan in case that Adobe would at some point say, well, it's be nice all with open source, but we don't really need that anymore as a dependency. Um, I don't see that happening anytime soon because they heavily depend on the open source aspect of the commerce product right now. It's, it, there's, a, there's a dependency there that they can't cut out just straight away. They can make it um, optional, I guess, by moving everything into the cloud and SaaS and microservices. Uh, eventually, they will have replaced all of the aspects of the platform. So they could make the monolith as we know and love it uh, optional. But that doesn't mean they can get rid of it because there's millions and millions poured into the platform each and every day by merchants that are choosing for the PHP-based version today. So um, rumor is Adobe still supporting Magento 1 Enterprise customers. So I wouldn't see them stop supporting Magento 2 customers on the PHP platform in the next five or even eight, 10 years, who knows. Um, but that doesn't really bring the platform in a position where I would like to see it, where it prospers and gets new features and there's innovation happening on the platform because it's currently just treated as a dependency that they need to keep alive. And that's, that's just a bit, that's not bright enough for me uh, because I really want to build my future with the platform together with my customers and partners, etc., uh, on this platform. Um, independent of Adobe, together with Adobe if I can, um, but independent of them so that we can do whatever we choose to do with the platform, which is best for the merchants that we serve and the agencies that we work with, etc. cetera. Um, so I guess I haven't really answered the question, what do we need from Adobe? Um, but it kind of paints the picture of, in my head, what I think the current standing is, how that we as a community can work with Adobe. Um, I've kind of shifted my perspective to being thankful for everything that they give us to still enable us to heavily sponsoring the community each and every day. So there's still a lot of money being poured into this platform and community. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm choosing to kind of get into a, a, a more thankful position for what they do give us. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to figure out. Like, uh, I'd be curious what do you sell Magento or Adobe Commerce? And are you currently getting the tools and everything that you need from Adobe to successfully sell the platform to your customers? I think it's the choice of language really depending on the customer. So the customer, the merchant, typically dictates what they want. But this has been going on for years. You know, if I look way, way back, 10 years plus, the customer came and said, we would like a Magento site. You know, they would, they would lead that conversation. So I think it's kind of, hard for Adobe or Magento now to understand that customers are coming and saying we want, you know, name the platform, it's kind of different. I think if I, if I made an attempt to answer the, the question, and I think it wouldn't be, it's not about what more that I think Adobe need to do. I think there's a subtlety that they need to understand that's very different than the way that it used to be. We've got Magento Evangelist extraordinaire from years gone by sat in the front row here. If I, if I compared today, current day to what was going on sort of five plus years ago. I think there's certain things that Adobe have done that they've, they've tried too hard to control the community. That specific word control, in, in my opinion, could be upsetting a lot of people again, but it's just my opinion. So I think they've tried too hard to control it and you can't control this community. It's not possible. You need to work with it. You need to think about the really smart and intelligent people that exist around it. And I think if they could be a little bit more collaborative and think about ways of working with, with those people, I think we'd all get a way better result. So it's not, it's not about what more, I think it's about maybe being a little bit less controlling, if, in, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, before we break up, is that, is that what I'm saying? No, but I think it is, um, it's all valid and I think it actually plays quite well into the next question that I'm gonna go into for um, Matthias. Obviously, the Magento Association was set up with the community in mind. Obviously, I was part of the inaugural board um, way back when. And so this is a really interesting question for me, is to see how far it's got and where it's gone um, and what role it plays, the Magento Association actually plays in this, in this community. 
Okay, that, that, that's going to be the tough one. <clears throat> so um, I got in touch with the entire Adobe Magento Association Matrix thing at Meet Magento in Poland. Um, and I heard a lot of complaints about the management company um, that ran the association back in the day. I don't know who's familiar with that, but there was a company based in Chicago that basically offers association as a service. But ass sounds stupid. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And the 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 thing that that I that I, I start to see more and more is that the assumption to hand out managing an association of passionate open source people, because we all are a very special breed of person, right? Um, and just handing that out to someone who has like a process for how to run open, uh, not open source, but, 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 but how do I run non-profit organization, and it doesn't matter whether it's a cancer fund um, or an open source software project, it's two entirely different things. So they tried running it by their, by their schema, and rightly so, right? It was just, it, I think that management company was a, was a poor fit for the task at hand. And at the same time, I think that the size of Magento as a movement is underestimated to do this in your spare time. I think that that's slightly idealistic to a degree, maybe a bit naive, you know, but it's, it's, it's fine, it happens, right? So um, when I offered my help back in the day in Poland already, it was like, maybe I can support you a little bit, but I also figured out, no, 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 this takes like a full-time position to actually do this, so that's, that's what I'm doing here. So I have no backup plan whatsoever, by the way. I don't have an agency, blah, 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 nothing like that. I'm, I'm pulling all my, all my future depends on this. Um, and what we're seeing now is a turnaround because we got, we got rid sounds so mean, but like we parted ways well, with a management company um, and uh, I'm with the help of my fellow committee members and people on the board um, and other passionate people and slowly trying to turn these things around and give committees, for example, a lot more decision-making power. Because in the old ways, how the old management company worked, committees didn't have any de decision power. It was more like, oh, you're, you're like, more like a consultant. Or, or we'll listen to your opinion, but we'll shield the board from everything you say. And that, that created some weird dynamic between committees and the board, because the, some committees think, well, the board doesn't listen to us. I'd argue the board knew only 5% of what you actually suggested. Um, and I'm running a more open approach to things, and it's interesting to see or, or to talk to people from the committees and go like, I, I had the question on Tuesday, like what does the board want us to do in terms of membership? And I'm like, well, whatever you decide, you're the committee. That's the job, right? Oh, so we can decide whatever? Yes. And it's not, it's, it not, not you can decide whatever you want to decide, you have to. That's part of the job description. And everybody's face lit up and was like, wow, that's new, that's cool, we'll get right to work. So um, this, is, this is the one thing that changed. Um, I'm looking at the watch. But um, the other thing that has changed is that um, there was no plan in written form that I got my hands on how Magento, open source, and Adobe's collaboration is supposed to work. None. It was, I guess it was just being talked about, but nobody wrote it down somewhere. What we have now, and that's mainly what, uh, what the board negotiated, is we have an agreement with Adobe with clear deliverables, which shows position the product, Magento open source, in the market. And without magento.com or magento.org, this is not possible at all. So we need that marketing platform Sorry. in order to make that happen. Same thing goes with uh, build the community, no, the, the, no the, the community council for open source contributions. So Adobe is actively asking people to help 
push the code base forward, which also, from my knowledge, seems to be a new thing. And I don't know whether it's new, but now it's like somebody wrote it down. So that's, I guess, the biggest change so far, from what I can see. Thank you. That's really interesting. Um, and it's certainly opened my eyes to a lot, especially with a lot of changes that must have gone on within the association. It's great to see that, that, that that's happening, that you're leading that. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the less pre-prepared questions and the ones that are coming in via the Q&A. Um, there's a couple in here that are slightly less anonymous than uh, <laughs> others, such as what is the best marketing automation platform, which is obviously MailChimp. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> Salesforce. <laughs> from not a Clavio employee, um, but Clavio. Sorry, Clavio. <laughs> sorry, I do apologise. <laughs> um, so it's because I'm a commoner I'm from the Midlands. Um, so <laughs> the next one we've got up here is um, something that you know. Love the question, it's, though. It's been made. It's been made a bit of a joke of so far today. The Luma theme. Um, and if it continues to be the base theme for Magento, do you believe that this will scare away future developers and, merchant from, from mer and merchants from actually using the platform? I'll open that one up probably to you. Uh, I might be too biased. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. I think, I think you should take it. <laughs> I should, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to come up with an answer. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we can Yeah, so I, I'm, uh, I perceive um, I got so frustrated with the Luma front end and PWA solutions that I built my own solution, which uh, many of you in the room are actively using today. So I think something went in, a, in the right direction there. Um, one of the main things that we hear from our users is that they actually enjoy their work more than they did before they worked with Huva. So that's a big win, I think not just for, for us as Team Huva, but for the community as a whole. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if much can be done to make Luma more enjoyable, uh, make that more attractive. I think, I think we did manage to make Magento as a platform more attra attractive with the introduction of Huva. Um, and I do also believe that um, the PWA solutions out on the market today um, they might not serve each and every merchant, maybe minority of the merchants, but okay. Um, but developers, especially the juniors fresh out of school that like shiny new things, they love to work with JavaScript and single page applications and everything. So um, yeah, there's, there's a new breed of developers that, uh, that are a fit for that. So I think in a way that also makes Magento uh, more interesting to work with. I think as a backend platform, and most developers, we all have a love-hate relationship with the platform from, um, <laughs> uh, but the front end is really the most gnarly part that I think we, we managed to solve with Huva. How do you manage to uh, keep your developers on board whilst working also on Magento? Yeah. He stood at the back of the room, Jake, uh, he does it. <laughs> no, um, uh, it's a good question. Um, I'm not sure it's a question for me, to be honest, because I'm not, I'm not far away from some of this stuff now. Um, I think there's, there's still a good group of uh, people, clearly, that are still so interested in the development of the platform. And I come back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, there being less control and making it more community. And I think that's your, you know, a great example of that, someone that's just gone, well, actually, we're going to go off in this direction. And I think the community has continued to do that and deliver over the past few years. Um, but keep up, keeping people engaged in, in, in what's there, I think that's, it's also hard. Because, because, like you just said, you know, people are going to be attracted to the shiny new thing. So yeah. that might be something different in six months' time than, than now again. You know, it's always the uh, pace of change is going to continue to, continue to happen. So um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm well placed to answer the question, to be honest. Well, um, I have just seen the time and we don't have too long left, so I'm going to jump around a little bit because I think we've covered quite a lot, wide, wide variety of subjects already, which is, I think, going to help us all have a conversation after this as well. <clears throat> but I just wanted to um, jump into some of the polls that we've been doing as well, um, alongside this um, collecting of Q&A. And 
obviously we've spoke quite a bit about um, the community and how, how we're all feeling in, within the community, etc. And one of the questions we asked was, in regards to the community, I feel, dot, dot, dot. Um, those answers were, not much has changed. My screen keeps jumping about. <laughs> not much has changed, is it? Um, less connected than three years ago, more connected than three years ago, or I'm new, please connect with me. That's an interesting one, though. Yeah, and the winning one with 34% of the uh, feedback, which we had 50 people um, answer this poll, and it's that they feel less connected than three years ago, which actually ties in well with a question that's coming not from Ben Marks specifically. Um, <laughs> about, um, I think I've lost, I've lost the screen, but um, about whether they think since losing the evangelist that Adobe Commerce has kind of let go of the community a little bit and it's, it's slipped away because obviously people are feeling less connected. Um, is that a, 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 pandemic. an opinion that the panel yeah, shares? That one. Yeah. I think pandemic has at least uh, yeah. three we quarters of the entire situation and I think people often conflate the two. Yeah. And I think that's Poor not, timing. not smart. Yeah. I think Adobe did get unlucky with that um, because it, it's obviously <laughs> it's difficult to differentiate between what was the pandemic and what was, was Adobe. Um, so yeah, I mean, has anyone got any opinions that they'd like to share on, on that and how we think we get that uh, vibe back? I think just having events like this helps as well, personally. Yeah, I, I, I would like to hook into that because uh, I saw on the, in the bottom line there were a couple of people that said, hey, I'm new, please connect. Um, and uh, might be a nice opportunity to repeat again the Pac-Man rule that we has, yeah. have as a community. Uh, whenever we're standing around and we're talking in a group of people, even if you're just a duo, keep an open, uh, uh, open stance, the way that you stand, keep a circle open, never close it fully, so that someone that's interested to join the conversation can just walk in and as a Pac-Man, you can a, a circle can get as big as the room as you're, that you're standing in. So just always keep an open mind for people that seem to be interested to approach you, um, and, uh, and make them listen into your conversation. So uh, that's that's where that's the most welcoming thing you can do as a community. Just be open to other people to listen to the conversation. It makes all of the difference. I've, uh, Ten years ago, first uh, event I went to. I tried to engage with people, um, and it didn't, it, it didn't work for me. And uh, there was a big uh, letdown because I heard about the great community and how open and everything, and it didn't feel that the first time. And luckily, in the past 10 years, I felt it uh, very much uh, in, in, in many places. And that's, um, uh, that's the best thing that we can do, I think, also to get new people into this community and help them feel uh, what this, this spirit is that we've captured in this community. We need the young people to also join because we're all getting gray and grumpy and, and the young people are bringing the energy and the joy and the enthusiasm, so, so welcome them. Um, and uh, if you're new in the room, um, come up to me or anyone um, and tell me if someone didn't let you in because I'll have a word with them. <laughs> the Hoover bodyguard. Maybe do something like a, like a newbie bingo. Anyone know that? You get like a small bingo card, and everyone who's there for the first time can just take it, and then there's tasks on it, which is like find somebody who owns a cat, find somebody <laughs> who's from a different continent, and you just once you have bingo cards, it, you, it forces you to get to know people. That's a really. You should idea. be on the event yeah. committee of yeah. the association. <laughs> I am on every committee. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think for the final question, I think I'll keep it linked to that. Um, it's got quite a lot of upvotes on here. Is how do we get new generations into Magento? How do you, how do you think that, that the best way we can do that is? Would you like to? Have you got opinions on that? You too? are the new generation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the old generation now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's. I feel a little bit out of it now. I feel like I'm just coming back in myself. So I kind of feel like a new generation, like you say. Um, but. I have the slight advantage that I know everyone is nice, which is which is always great. And it is hard to approach a crowd, like you say, even when they've got an open circle. I know it is, it is difficult. You just kind of have to like psych yourself up. Um, so I think I'd implore people that have been in the community a while, if you see someone sitting around that's looking up, maybe, 
not not looking down the floor. You don't want to just go up to everyone when they're like trying to have some time away. Um, but yeah, if they're looking around and they're by themselves, maybe we could just make the effort to go and, and speak to them as well. Um, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested to hear what the panel thinks on how we get new generations into into Adobe Commerce. If somebody would like to pick that that one up, anybody? No. <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, events like this, I think, I think doing, doing this, I'll be honest, um, we, we debated a little while over whether we should do Mage Titans again because it felt like something that, that was a long time ago in many ways because it was about 2018, I think, the last time we, yeah, we, was, did, yeah. we, did, a, we did an event. So, um, you know, we were, we were debating over it and then, like you say, the, the pandemic got in the way, which also feels like ages ago now. So I think slowly but surely, maybe we've just been a little bit slow on the sort of, you know, sort of getting back to it. That I mean that collectively, that, that we're, we need to make more of, a, more of an effort. And I think if we can put events together like this or people, like I've noticed a couple of, um, a couple of sort of small ages, agencies starting to emerge as well. And I think the, the benefit of that, the good thing about that is that um, when I look back to where Space 48 was years ago, when we were a smaller agency, it was, it was much easier to bring younger people into that environment because their stage of development was closer to what the business's stage of development was as well. Yeah. So I think that became a, and it's actually really nice to look around the room today and see lots of people that I've actually worked with before at Space 48, whether they're still with us now or you know, maybe working in other places. But I think, I think that just came from a special time also where Space 48 as a business was just at a certain size. So you know, anyone that's sort of starting on that journey of setting up the their own agency, looking at other smaller events, perhaps, perhaps that you can do in the in your local area to bring pe bring people in. Um, I know there's been loads of um, uh, Magento meetup initiatives that have been done in the past. I know there's been one here in Manchester. I remember the one that was back in the day was down in London as well. Yeah. And I think people picking up those small initiatives locally because you you kind of need you need an event of some form or something to happen to to create the bingo moment. And if you're not doing that, then you know, you're not, you're not going to bring the new people in, in my opinion. Yeah, and there's also, there's also one thing to consider because what, what, what happens a lot is that people think, oh, we have trouble getting the new blood in, so to speak. Is that that is a sign of decline? It's not. What everybody needs to realize is that when Magento started, like, what was it, 15, 17 years ago ish? 15. I think 15, right? There weeks. was some 15th anniversary thing. Um, e commerce was new. Now it's a commodity. If you're a merchant that starts a business today, it's not a question, oh, do I do e-commerce? It's a no-brainer, it's a commodity. And I've been through this in the, in the content management world, exact same situations. Um, so our just, we, we just had our 25th anniversary <laughs> two days ago. So um, when we started with the thing, content management was new because people started creating Dreamweaver with templates and thought they were like, <laughs> the hot shit, right? Um, now it's a commodity. Right? I, don't, I, I can't imagine a single website that has more than five pages of content that's not driven by some sort of CMS in the background. Same is for, for e-commerce. And that's also some, just something to realize is that um, you, won't having, you won't be having problems finding someone who goes into, well, crypto's dying too now, right? But you know, but that's, oh, that's the new hot shit. No, no, we're now in the Magento, or e-commerce in general has reached the commodity stage of the market right now. And that's just something to be aware of. It's not something to be woeful about. It's just realizing that's where we're at. Um, we might be running out of time. We are. Um, um, you can go on then. Quick. I could go on for quick? days. Whatever. I'm getting daggers. Um, <laughs> so I think the Magento community has always been very much developer driven. And sure, there's a lot of business around it and whole other aspects. But in the end, it's the platform and it's the developers that initially built the community. Um, and I think we kind of shit our own bet in the past seven years, especially seven to five years ago. Magenta 2 was released. Um, Rightfully, we weren't too happy with the way it was released or what shape it was in. Um, but we have been extremely negative about the product, about the owner of the product. Previous one, current one, whatever. Um, and the platform has improved greatly since. Uh, I personally think Magenta 2 is the best shape it has, ever has been. 
Um, and you can always choose to complain about things, but you can't complain about juniors not wanting to join and work with Magento if you have spent years complaining online, on social media, Stack of Change, etc., telling about how shit the product was, because <laughs> Now, if you Google Magento, you will find shit and shit and shit piles. By the, the way, PHP is dying, in case you don't know. <laughs> um, so so we've made it look really unattractive towards junior developers. Um, and I think we need initiatives from people in this room to make it attractive again. And uh, I, I will applaud Jesse, um, who started the Academy, Magento Academy, um, for people coming straight out of school. Um, and we need more of that. We need positive communication. We need positive blog posts. We need to show a little bit of gratitude towards the big owner of Magento, still giving us things. Um, and if we approach everything with more positivity and make something, if we make Magento look nicer, it's going to look more appealing for a developer to work with it. So um, that's an assignment for everyone <laughs> in the room. Uh, try to, uh, to say something positive about Magento. And uh, if you love to work with it, make sure others also want to work with it. So that's something we can do. Thank you all. Um, we have gone over our time, but our panel will be about, so definitely come and ask the questions that you've submitted that we haven't got round to. They'll be happy to answer them. Um, I haven't just signed them up without them knowing for that, but that, I'm sure they will love it. But yeah, thank you very much for this thing, and we'll move on to our next talk of who Rob will introduce for you. What number is this one? <laughs> number four. Number four, so long. <laughs> 